This is the main setup screen of the software. The first option here is Clients Info. Uh, you can turn this option on by clicking yes or turn it off by clicking no. If you have it on, what it will do is it will ask you for uh, customer info with every sale, so it will tie that sale to that customer. This is very useful if you want to do your own analytics, figure out who your best customers are, how much they've spent with you, are they coming back enough, often enough, and so on and so forth. You can also use this for marketing or advertisement purposes. The next option is uh, client notifications, specifically uh, this one notifies you of an upcoming client uh, birthday. So if you want to use it, uh, of course you're going to need to collect in customer's info the uh, client's birth date and you'll just put a check mark in here on this check box and enter the number of days that you want to be notified for this in advance. The next option is picture logo. Um, if you have a, a picture of your logo that you want to use for this software, you can enter the path it, uh, for it in here. Or, of course, the preferred and foolproof way is to simply browse to get to the file, uh, go through the folders, get to the file, point to it, and it will put the proper path in here. Uh, and if you do include a picture in here for your logo, that will show up on the main sales screen. So it will always show your logo on the main sales screen as you're selling. And it will also a print on top of all the receipts. It will include the logo and the receipts in the business. The ne next option is networking. Um, this is set up in here for one single user right now. As you can see, the uh, software's database path points to the local C drive and then the POS folder that's because that's where we installed the software by default and this is the file the database file rm is in restaurant made dot db3 uh, if you want to network of course if you don't want to network you would leave this as it is uh, if you want to network uh, what you do is you uh, first create a network uh, physically in your environment with the multiple computers and then decide which one of those computers is going to carry the main database that's going to be shared among uh, the network and shared and in a way that all of those uh, other computers are going to use that database and uh, on that computer you will make one share shared folder and you would copy one of these local databases from the other computers doesn't matter which one you will just copy it uh, to that share folder and um, then you would go to the computers that need to point to it to let's call them terminals and you would put in the path in here that points to that shared folder in the network. And of course, the file will always be rm.db3. Uh, and like with a uh, few of the other op options, uh, browsing is preferred and error proof. You just browse through the network, you know, to, to point to the, um, to the path to point to this file this shared file and it will enter the path without uh, any problems without any uh, misspellings or anything like that uh, however again if you're not going to use networking uh, this needs to be left alone the next option is invoice numbering this option allows you to choose the number uh, from which you want your first or next um, invoice to start um, let's say we'll do like 2500 uh, and that's going to be the next invoice number and then it continues incrementing from that number uh, this is very useful if you're in a situation where you've had an existing business before you acquired our software and you already have a certain number of invoices issued and you're already up to a certain number greater than one so you don't want to start at one and you just enter the next number and you'll go from there the next option is backup. Um, this option allows you to um, designate a path or a location uh, for a backup file. And if you do designate a location where a backup file could be placed, uh, this software, every time it exits 
which means every time you exit the software, every time you're done working, it will make a complete copy of the database and save a copy of it in that folder that you designate. Of course, you can type it in in here that the path, so no files are needed, just looking for a path location, uh, or again the preferred way is to browse and just you know point to the folder. Say I'm gonna just pick the C drive, so it's gonna copy you know a file. It's gonna copy the database, make a copy of it into the root of the C drive. Of course that is not very recommended. Sometimes some computers have this restricted so you don't maybe don't want to use the root. Maybe you want to literally use a, a folder. Maybe you can make a folder that's named backup or something like that. That will be probably more recommended. And of course if you don't want to use this uh, you just type in none in here. The next option is color ID. Uh, this option allows you to utilize the caller ID function of your modem if you have a modem in your computer which most computers do and if you have a landline and you're receiving calls from a landline uh, which has a caller ID feature uh, your modem can actually we can actually utilize the modem's caller ID feature and your landline's caller ID feature to uh, show the caller ID information in our software and it actually goes further than just showing and displaying the caller ID information when the phone rings uh, it the program actually picks up the information once the phone rings and not only that it shows it to you but if it's a pre-existing customer and you're collecting customer data you've uh, you know entered yes in here to collect customer data it will open up that screen for collecting customer data and if it's a pre-existing customer that you already have collected data on it will just pull up all their information so without you pressing anything uh, without you touching anything the software screen is gonna show the customer records right away just because the phone rang uh, of course if it's a non-existent customer it will fill in the information that it gets from the, um, the caller ID it will fill in their first and last name it will fill in the phone number so it does most of the work for you and then you can maybe fill in the rest or if that's all you collect that's fine too and uh, if this option uh, sounds good to you all you need to do in here is select the modem port the port that the modem is installed on usually it will be COM1, COM2, COM3 or COM4 and uh, right now it's not showing us any options for it because we don't have a modem installed on this PC and then you would of course need to uh, select the AT command for enabling the caller ID on your modem um, usually they come disabled uh, from the factory even though some are enabled just in case though uh, you need to do this in order for everything to function properly and this uh, command is actually found in the technical manual in the little book that comes with your modem if you're having trouble finding it then you need to contact the modem's uh, support line the modem's uh, technical support however we have some uh, commonly used commands in here by the most known brands and hopefully that helps um, and lastly you also need to um, find out what the AT command is for disabling auto answer on that modem and this will disable the um, auto answer mode on it what that means is uh, you don't want the modem to answer the line for you you don't want the the modem to pick up you still want to uh, pick up uh, yourself you want to uh, pick up manually pick the receiver of your phone the next and last uh, option in this screen is autocomplete and uh, this is an option where if you have it turned on it will actually try and guess what you're trying to type in when you're filling in uh, some special fields like let's say the item ID field in the main screen you're trying to hand type um, an item for sale and in order to save you some time the software will try to find as soon as you start typing it will try to find uh, that item or something similar to it the first thing that comes up sorted off alphabetically in in the existing inventory and if it finds some matches it will just suggest you know what the rest of it is so you don't have to keep on typing uh, so this is very helpful in those situations 
it is also available in in more than just that um, you know uh, field throughout the software just to help you with auto completing things so you don't have to always type everything to the end if you don't want to but of course what is interesting is that if you do have a barcode scanner and you will be scanning uh, the um, item IDs the item numbers then it is actually recommended to turn this option off uh, because you will be scanning the entire ID you won't be typing and you don't need this kind of help but it also with the barcode scanner it improves the performance the speed of the barcode spanner scanner if this um, option is turned off now when you're done setting up uh, the options in here and uh, selecting your choices in order for the changes to take effect you need to click on this button submit changes and it will just notify you that um, the changes were updated successfully and that the software will need to restart in order for the changes to take effect so as soon as you click OK in here the software will just restart itself